Okay, we're live. It's James Maduke speaking, trading sites.io. Um, every once in a while, uh, my wife has her friends, longtime friends, over for a little bit of tea. And uh, today was no different, except for one thing. And I want to share it because I think it's something that's important. If you're a course creator, a teacher, someone who's sharing something, um, it's one of those ones where you got to get your head out of the sand. And I'm going to tell you the story and then I'll explain why it's important. One of the things that uh, someone who was there, who is in her 70s, uh, was talking about how they've been using ChatGPT. And I said, oh, isn't that interesting? You've been using ChatGPT. So I'm telling you about a person who has no technical experience, who was on their smartphone. They've maybe used a computer before, but were certainly not involved in their regular business career. But they've you know, been using ChatGPT on their smartphone for the last four or five months, she said. And she was kind of explaining what she was doing to uh, my wife and her friends. And frankly, it shocked me. And I think, you know, again, if you're in this space where you're thinking, oh, I'm going to create a course or I've got a really good idea for a course. Or I'm going to be able to teach this because I know how to use ChatGPT or some of the AI tools. Um, the fact that this person was able to do what I'm going to tell you that she did, I think is really uh, an eye opener for anyone who thinks that their content is unique anymore. So they were kind of telling me, my, my, obviously my wife knows stuff I do with AI, uh, but the friend of hers had no idea that I was doing in that particular space. And she was really proud because what has happened is she's got some new grandkids and uh, she doesn't have enough room when the grad kids come over to visit. And she's trying to figure out how can I rearrange a room so I can get like another crib in or something else. And I've been kind of criticized for using examples of using tools like Gemini and ChatGPT to do furniture placement. But this is exactly what that person had done. Picture on their smartphone of an existing room. They uploaded it to ChatGPT on their phone and they asked ChatGPT to redecorate the room or change the room and show them the proper or most best way to place the furniture so that they'd have room for two cribs. Now, this is an absolutely honest to God, true story. We've got someone with no technical experience on their smartphone redecorating rooms by taking pictures and talking to ChatGPT. So I want you to think about that for a second. If you are creating a course right now, you're using ChatGPT, you may be more advanced. There are people on the street that you may be trying to teach that have the exact and are starting to use them in the exact same way. And this number is astronomical now, and it's even going to get crazier over 2025. What I did is a little bit of research up front. I was just trying to find out, you know, what kind of growth can we expect or what's actually going to happen here. And uh, I'll pull over a little screen so that you can see it. Uh, and again, these stats are from ChatGPT. What I did is I said, you know what, uh, let's take a look and see what's happening from 2023 to 2025, the end of the year. And I said, give me the usage for OpenAI, which is ChatGPT, Google Gemini, and Anthropic Cloud. And I can include the references for you so that you do, in fact, see them uh, and have them available to you. Here's the part that is really, really cool. If we look at 2024, I'm going to pull over my mouse here so you can see it. 2024, right there, we're talking about, uh, you know, not too much here for Google. Anthropic and Cloud is kind of growing consistently. I don't know if that's valid. I think it's higher than that. And I'll show you the stats that I got for it. But here's the one I've always been really, really impressed with Google because they have that ecosystem in behind it. But you can see January 2025, it's pretty close to ChatGPT right now. And we're talking ballistic kind of growth here, 2024 to 25. And I think this is actually going to get even more astronomical. And these are how quickly it is being adopted. Now, I've got a 70-year-old person on the street here talking with uh, friends about using ChatGPT. If you are selling a course to anyone in business, if you are selling a course to anyone who has any um, inkling of what's going on with ChatGPT, it's not going to take long for people to get a real understanding of what it can do and what it can't do. You got to get your head out of the sand and think about how can I leverage this outside of 
just regurgitating facts and creating courses that have no value, no frameworks, and no particular outcome. Um, I didn't know exactly too, there's a term here that's kind of used, it's a MAU. What I wanted to do is actually find out what that was. So I did ask ChatGPT to give me a little bit of feedback on that particular one uh, about what the term actually means. And what it does mean, according to ChatGPT, is it is, let me just pull it down to the bottom. Uh, 400M MAU is an important for educators. So, so basically it means half a billion, you, you, uh, billion users are platforms AI features are mainstream, not niche. So again, this is the stats that I picked up and there was a whole bunch of references for the stats here. So um, again, I'm using ChatGPT 03, the thinking model here. So it did provide all the references and it took an average of the stats that it came out. So it could be a bit higher, could be a bit lower. But here's the one that's important. You got 400 MU, so half a billion users uh, on this one. Um, uh, Kino, where is it? Four, it's 400 million monthly users. So it is uh, uh, t in a typical 30 day window, each person is counted uh, once, no matter how many sessions they have during the month. So that's not people logging in 40 times or 30 times in a year. Those are individual people logging in once over the 30 day period. This is an astronomical a number of people who are regular users or are people who are off the street, typical users. Again, think about this when your business and you're playing around with it. What am I gonna do? How am I gonna make myself unique? How am I going to be able to uh, use expertise in a different way and then leverage AI in a way that's different than the people on the street can. I'm looking at this now and I'm kind of thinking, well, what's going to happen the end of 2025? Is it going to be half a billion people or is it going to be three quarters of a billion people? We're getting close to this point where everyone has access to AI, whether it be ChatGPT or Google or Claude. And I think Google is actually going to be the surprise here. Um, just a simple example, I did another video on Google Meet, which has Gemini cook an actual online meeting platform now. So this is a, a wonderful time to get involved in AI, but think about it differently. What are we going to do that's different than other than just basically getting content together? How are we going to create experiences to be able to teach what it is that we already know? What are the outcomes that we're going to pro promise people that if they do follow our frameworks or our stories, that they'll be able to have something that they want? And in fact, how are we going to find out what people want without having to deal with them or engage with them? This is an exciting time. I hope you enjoyed this little session. We'll be back again shortly with some more videos. Um, if you haven't already, make sure to go to trainingsites.io forward slash join. The link is there. I'd love to have you there in the free community where all of my resources starting, building, and growing an education business are there. My name's James. Like and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Expect the best.